and go. Come on, Facebook, we can do this. As always, we'll oh, wait to save it for like three seconds. There we go. Howdy, hacksters! Welcome to MCU Monday. As always, I feel it necessary to say that if you put comments in the Facebook page while we're streaming live, I will get to them at the end of the broadcast. If you put them on YouTube, I will not see them until afterwards, but I do check them every week or so, so I'll hope to get a response to you. Anyway, uh, I'm Alex Glow with Hackster.io, your host as usual, and today we're talking about the Transform Your Thinking contest that we're doing with On Semiconductor, and in particular, we're going to be unboxing the RSL10 dash sense db gevk kit so this is a dev kit for their new rsl10 super low power ble chip uh, a system in a package it's so cool um you will be stunned by how much this whole little dev kit has on it and it's teeny tiny i haven't opened it yet so i don't know how teeny tiny exactly but it includes all kinds of stuff in a microscopic I'm just gonna say it's microscopic, it's not, but you know. Um, low power wireless package. So let's get this box open and then we can take a look at some of that stuff. Cause I like to do the thing, oh yeah, I got this sweet ruler from uh, Evil Mad Scientist over the weekend. Look at it, PCB rulers are the best. It's centimeters and inches, uh, perfect pocket size. Okay, so I got this huge package, it's large. But I think the package, or the, the, the device itself is quite small. Oh, there's a box in here. This is recursive. It's very meta. So what do we have here? On Semiconductor, driving innovation in energy efficient electronics, energy efficient innovations. Do you think it's energy efficient? Uh, open it up. Oh, <laughs> has our address on it. All right. Ooh, after some pink insulation, we get our. Um, oh, oh, it's USB mini. I thought it was micro. Um, USB mini connector. Let's make sure that we are well focused, so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Um, and that should that should be pretty nice. <clears throat> Pardon me. So yeah, mini USB uh, to USB A. This is for connecting the debugger, which this kit also comes with. And I'll show you where to get it if you don't already have it. Get rid of the rest of this. Onto the floor it goes. All right, hope there wasn't anything else in there. <laughs> uh, what are these? This must be the flexible NFC connector, or this is the whole thing. Ah, and it comes preloaded with a coin cell. So this thing runs off of a three volt coin cell, uh, which makes it perfect for doing wearables, for doing like a watch, for doing a pendant, for doing anything like that. You've got this flexible NFC uh, antenna that plugs into the side of the board, I think over here, and I'll have to look up which way that goes. I'm sure they've got pictures. Ho ho ho, look at it, so small. Uh, there are these 10 pin connectors for debugging and uploading uh, new programming. Then you've got a whole host of little sensors and things. I wanna see what else is, oh, this must be the, the Seger debugger. Yeah, the J-Link Lite Cortex-M-9. Uh, this is a debugger that you can use to program it and debug, obviously. Um, so, in the grand scheme of things, this plugs into here. Boop. And then this uh, attaches somehow. Oh, interesting, it's only got nine pins. One of them is not on there, presumably because you don't need it. Uh, and then you've got this double-ended cable that appears to be the same on both sides. So I'm gonna... Um, you've got 10 pins on each side. I'm going to attach those. I'm not actually going to program this right now because it's just an unboxing and I want to get to this later but I think it looks like a really exciting program or a, a product platform for doing cool stuff with. Now this looks like it goes this way, but I would want to check that. Uh, yeah, this one too, actually. And so we have three user programmable buttons on here. One, two, three, one in the center and then two on the sides. 
Uh, they do face up rather than out, so they're not as great for watches, maybe, but you could still do something cool with them. Um, yeah, here, this here is the module itself, providing the Bluetooth low energy. And uh, what else have we got on here? Let's take a look at, oh yeah, you got a little MEMS microphone it looks like. You've got that little telltale hole in the, in the side of the package. Let's see if I'm right. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong, believe it or not. Um, oh yeah, their suggested applications include things like helmets connected to a Bluetooth network to monitor and report worker safety. You could do this with sports safety as well. Wristbands with automatically fall detection and emergency services notification, popular. Uh, automatic light operation for indoor lighting systems. And smart locks using BLE. Okay, so all the things on here. Is that the mic? No, that's the environmental sensor. Ugh. I still wrong. Where's the microphone? There is one on here. So maybe I'm right still. Anyway, uh, so on the, let's see, we've got the, oh, maybe these aren't actually, these don't actually point to whatever they correspond to, so I could still be fine. <laughs> uh, and we can look on the data sheet as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, you've got a three axis gyro, three axis uh, accelerometer, and three axis uh, magnetometer, so you've got, uh, and they're in, in different packages, but yeah, uh, you all together have 9-axis IMU, you have a programmable mo mi <laughs> microcontroller <laughs> talking to the uh, accelerometer and gyro and doing some data processing, you have, um, oh, they're saying that the magnetometer is perfect for augmented reality and location-based services, that could be really cool, I wonder what the resolution is there on the IMU. Uh, then we've got an ambient light sensor uh, with a response similar to the human eye. And we also have an integrated environmental sensor for wearables and mobile apps, which uh, is noted down here. It includes um, high accuracy gas, pressure, humidity, and temperature sensor. So all kinds of stuff, plus your digital microphone. Um, INMP522, is this labeled? It's not, no, it's something else. RRJ, Hmm. Well, oh wait, that was a different thing. I'm determined to see if I'm right about this microphone. <laughs> it totally is! That thing I thought was the microphone is totally the microphone. Okay, good. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, the software. Okay, so you can talk to it with iOS and Android for cloud connectivity. Uh, you can select multiple sensors to monitor and send to a uh, connected cloud service. Look at this, you can toggle the different sensors on and off. You can see real-time feedback from them. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm really curious to see how long the battery lasts. It probably depends on which sensors you're using and for like how often you're pulling them. So for example, accelerometers tend to take a lot of energy and I'm curious to see um, how long this would last with constant accelerometer feed, for example. Um, there is a whole getting started guide that you can find linked at the bottom of this contest page in the resources section and um, that will tell you more about what exactly comes with it and how to get started. Um, the software, you've got the, you've got to install 64-bit Java, you then install J the JLink software from Segar, but they've got links to all of these, so it should be pretty simple. And then they've got some, some basic stuff on how to get started with the software. Exciting. Oh, and that shows you how to, oh, I was right about how to connect the thingy, uh, the cable, so it goes like, like so, goes across the board, yeah. The nice thing is that they have one of these little, um, little notches in the socket here, so that it, there's only really one way that you can plug the, the cable in. See that? It's polar. And there we go. Yeah, very nice. And it's pretty intuitive. Cable goes away from the programmer and debugger and uh, goes into the notch. Very cool. And then you could also use like pogo pins or something if you were doing it that way. Back to the contest, uh, we talked about the software. So there's four categories, uh, wearable or healthcare, safety or asset monitoring, 
Uh, asset monitoring, you know, you could do uh, tracking an object throughout its life cycle. Smart home and best overall design. Uh, each of these wins, uh, it says you must solve a problem in one of those categories. Each of those gets a thousand dollar electronic visa gift card uh, in USD. And then there's 10 runner-ups who each get a hundred dollar gift card. So that's, you know, 14 people who are making tons of money off of this. Very exciting. Uh, and then down here we have the resources with the user manual I just showed you. This guy with the software and stuff. You got links to the um, iOS and Android apps. You've got the web page for the device, an on semi. Very nice. And then uh, at the top of the page, as usual, you have your uh, contest status section. So uh, you've got 74 days left to submit a project. Um, unfortunately, we just already had applications for hardware close. So uh, if you've already been announced as a recipient of the hardware based on your prior idea, uh, we had 161 people apply for those. I'm very excited to see uh, what the winners, the, the people who get the hardware are going to build. And then you can still enter the contest uh, to win one of those prize packages if you want to get your hands on the hardware yourself. If it looks interesting to you, um, then you might as well get one and uh, start prototyping your idea and just give yourself the chance to win a prize as well. Super cool. So uh, besides all that, we also, um, Thomas Skinner has published a uh, temperature sensor tutorial using this um, that's just showing you how to go through the, the app. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's a very simple view into uh, how to use this as a Bluetooth temperature sensor. Very nice. Uh, so people are already uh, sharing projects with this. If you're building with it, I can't wait to see your tutorials because I want to build some little wearables with this. Um, as always, I'm fascinated by tiny devices that will run uh, for a long time on really low power because I hate attaching to my stuff, thing, <laughs> to myself, things that I'm going to have to take off and charge every night. So that's very attractive for me, uh, especially if there's some sensors that can go for like a week or, or more without needing to be charged while they're running. All right, uh, that's it for the on semi. Let me get this right again. <laughs> uh, RSL10 Sense GB GEVK. I'm going to call it the RSL10, um, even though that's just the name of the chip. Um, yeah, hack on. <laughs>